excited, excited that you guys are all here. Uh, I think we're in a, a pretty unique opportunity uh, tonight to have uh, Coach Jovicic willing to, to spend some time with us and to speak with us. And I hope that not only do we get a lot out of his presentation, but there's a chance to encourage some dialogue. Uh, I hope most of you should know his background uh, and where he comes from. There's, there's a reason why Team Serbia is here uh, with us. He came, most of the players that are uh, playing in the series tonight uh, have been coached and uh, developed uh, by Coach Udovicic. Uh, I think the things that we know him for on the highest level, winning medals at the Olympics and uh, winning world championships are all uh, important. But one of the things that I think uh, I'm most impressed with and the things that I feel like we all can learn from him is his ability to be a developmental coach and what he did on the younger levels with Partizan, uh, which uh, arguably is the best water polo school in the world. Uh, here's our, uh, the author and the uh, coach of that group, and I think this is a, tonight is an opportunity for us to begin to gain some of the perspective uh, on how they train their younger players, and how they were developed some of the best players in the world. And it's been very entertaining uh, and impressive to watch the guys here uh, this week playing some water polo. It's been awesome. So, uh, that being said, uh, we'd like to welcome Coach Jovic uh, for this tonight. Thank you. Thank you everyone, uh, it's really a pleasure to be here you know, and speak about uh, developing the players from young categories until uh, they reach uh, the national teams. You know. As John said just a few minutes ago, you know, for example, this uh, Serbian national team, uh, which I, uh, I suppose a lot of you watched the games yesterday and days ago and some of you will go watch the games tomorrow and day after tomorrow. This Serbia team is, is started to select uh, around 2000-2001 uh, and why I'm telling this because we, are, we must understand that it's a long term, pro long time process. You know, and, uh, and uh, nothing we can change so quickly, so easy, you know, to reach some high level. Uh, Ninety percent of, of the roster of the Serbian team are playing together almost 14 years, and. Uh, it's a huge advantage, not just against us right now, because we are not in the same range, same level of quality, I, I, I can say like this, because it's a reality, but we are trying to, to do something similar what I did in three times already in my career and reach the higher level, and our main goal is with this our national team, which is, we are trying to select right now, to reach to 2020 will be our main goal to try to win the gold medal in the Olympic Games in Tokyo. And uh, one of my approach is that I like to start with young, uh, teach young players because I think it's very useful, very easy from one, side, one point of view because they are willing to do everything what you are trying to teach them and trying to, you know, uh, help them to develop them to the higher level. And from other point of view, you know, right now in the situation in the States after the 2012 Olympic Games in London, that we don't have connection with the national, uh, senior national team in the pipeline. And we got big gap. And we are trying at the same time to develop the national team and to arrange the pipeline that something will not happen again in the history in the future for us. That we will make the connection that we will not bother and we will have a normal changing the rosters of two or three players every two or maybe two and a half year. What, which is really important and uh, 
it's needed if you want to stay on the high level. Uh, if you watch those games, you see the difference. But where is the basic difference? It's so simple things. Not something which is huge, what is high level of water polo. Simple things, simple drills, simple accept, you know, quality, what they started to do when they got 9, 10, 11 years old. Our, if you watch, I, I told like our guys on the, on the bench, uh, and the game in UOP, and the game uh, yesterday night in the USC Davis, you know. We are teaching the players from the young cutters, with 9, 10, and 11 years, to follow the ball, to know where is the ball all the time. And we think that they succeeded. They succeed, they accept this, and they are trying to present this. But this is not true. If you really analyze our games against Serbia, this is the main part where we, are, we fell down. Because each player in the Serbia team, against our player in the national team, they know exactly in every second in the scrimmage and the play, they know where is the ball. And they are following the, the ball. And they are not trying to react after something has happened because it's already too late. They are creating things. Get before the ball and get advantage. And this is where we are struggling right now. Because we are every time in the position to defend something. We are not in position to create something in front of them. They put them in position that they will going to defend themselves. Why I'm telling this, I will start, this is a little bit so, uh, interpretation, my uh, interpretation about to make it easier what I'm going to talk about. This is the same. Now it's national team level, but it's the same from 10, 11 years players who are starting to play ball. This is the same. Everything is the same. And you must know this as the beginning of the, my speech this afternoon tonight. Sorry about my English, I still started. Uh, you know, uh, I got some difficulties, you know, to, to present what I'm thinking in my head because, but I'm trying to be good as, uh, as I can. Please. This is the beginning. What I think is crucial for us. This is the empty lines for the swimming. This is the water pro practice. We pictured that in Stanford uh, two weeks ago before we left to Shanghai. Why I'm starting from this? Simple. Water, water, okay, but this is this is totally different. Swimming in water polo is totally different. If you want to teach players water polo, we must divide this. We are in the water polo. We are the familiar familiar with water polo. Okay, the sport is swimming in the water polo. It's familiar with water polo because basically we're using water polo, water. Sorry, but it's totally different. And this is a starting point for us if you want to you know, get in the right direction from the beginning. I'm, I'm not against swimming at all, just to let you know. And I think that some point is very useful if you are talking about conditioning. But for water polo, for mindset, for approach, for develop the players, we must know this is totally different. From the beginning. Where is the huge difference? I'm here one year, exactly one year here in the States. And I, I can tell right now, okay, 75, 80% pretty much sure that I'm 
sure about some things, what is good, what is bad. Water polo. I forbid our players in national team to use the goggles. We don't have goggles anymore. Why? Because we are sport, we are playing the sport with the ball. We must follow the ball, our head must be up much as we can during the practice. This is a starting point that we must change. Huge difference between Europe and the States here is that they, are, they got serious approach from the beginning when they came on the swimming pool. That's around eight, nine years old. Serious approach. Okay, that's me. They divide them and immediately who is good, who is less good swimmer, try to build him from the swimming, through the swimming, but using the water polo skills, water polo drills for swimming, because this is totally different. Position of the shoulders, position of the elbow, position of the chin, kicks with the legs, everything is different. Horizontal, vertical, everything is different. And we must know this. And this is the basic, why I'm talking this? Usually when I, I'm living in, uh, in, in Orish, I was living in Orish County, you know, and we got, it's good, we got plenty of swimming pools. But when, when I come to some uh, practice and I see the young kids and everything, you know, we got a bunch of coaches who are around the deck, you know, and what's going on? They give this, the players uh, to kids to swim something. Okay, they give them, okay, they're swimming. But why they are swimming? What they are swimming? What is the purpose of this? This is not the swimming. And we must try to, if may I saw like this, attack their brain, attack their heads immediately. Because they're going to bring us in the future a lot of goods. The difference here and in Europe you already know this, in Europe they are starting to play water polo uh, and to play this, uh, and the swim much earlier than here. I started in Partizan around when I got six and seven years old. You know, and this is one thing. I don't think that we can change this so fast or do, did we need to change this at all? You know, because every culture got every culture got a different approach and different you know system and everything, and we must respect this. But we are trying to do our best what we got. Second is that uh, I don't think that everybody can be the coaches in young categories. And this is the difference here in Europe. What I'm thinking about is, you think this, uh, you, you know the situation that we got so many clubs, we got so many kids, and you must have the coaches for this. And you're giving everyone, almost everyone, to help you to organize the practice. In Europe, this is not this. This is not the same approach. This is not the same approach. Why? Because the clubs, basically they are formatting the clubs. And the clubs in the same time try to develop the coaches and develop the players. This is different. I don't know right now how we can change this. Can we change this? It is the same situation in North Carolina, in South Carolina, in, in the middle of the country, or East. But this is the situation right now. And who wants to be the coach in Europe? Usually 90%, 80%. He's starting from the lower ages. And someone is following him, and someone is following this group, you know, and watching the kids, and at the same time, recruit him and recruit the players, 
and try to make in a system that's just the best on the state. I will not bother us about this subject anymore, but this is uh, that we need to know the start and difference. You know, but for me, basically, start to change the mindset that the coaches here must know and we must know that the swimming and the water pool is totally different. We can speak about the drills, what is different, what is better, what is good, but it's different. So different, and for me, it's like table tennis and the normal tennis. Okay, please. I already start with this subject. <coughs> Technical against tactical approach. Technical for me is mean basically fundamental fundamental drills. For the young categories, to, they, they will gonna accept this, and they will we gonna put them young uh, they, where they are young, you know, and trying to. In the same time, what they got, you know, their personal signature. On one side, protect this personal signature and they develop in the same time in the same. Same direction, develop them basically from the fundamental thing. Because we got so many talented kids, you know. But you know, I felt that in my on my own, you know, until some good coach came, you know, and said, no, 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 leave him. He's doing something weird, but he's doing something good. We will teach him something what is basically, but in say I keep. This what he is doing, or he is, nobody is doing like he is doing. Because when he going to reach to the national team, this, his skills, going to give us advantage. Because nobody can do this. But without basic, without fundamental things, he will not succeed to be at all in the high level. About tactical, uh, tactical approach. Why I'm talking about this? Because I already saw that coach here in states, just to trying to please understand me. I'm not blaming anyone. I'm just analyzing the situation. Okay, from my perspective, from my point of view. Here, coach. First thing, what he needs to do, what he is doing, to buy the whiteboard. And he is not a coach. Nobody can recognize him as a coach if he doesn't have the whiteboard in his back or on his deck. In Serbia, if you are looking partisan, we are not using whiteboard at all until 15 or 16 years old. Their ages, when they got 15, they're there in the on the line to get from the cadets to the youth. Why? Because we are trying to develop and recruit also the players and the coaches at the same time. That they, they will, they need to understand each other without whiteboard and try to teach the players to think. In their head, in th th think in their mind, what is the basically water polo? How they gonna, you know, get advantage? What is good? What is bad? To understand the meaning of the game. With the whiteboard, when you go and just draw him something, you know, I don't think that whiteboard is bad, but we must wait for whiteboard. We must teach them first. That after we can maybe gonna bring a whiteboard, that will be have huge impact on them. They will understand much more clearly what's going on, and we're gonna speed the game. They will speed the, the practice. They will speed the the level and everything. What we're gonna do next? But we must wait a little bit while. 
We were trying to attack a, a, every practice, the kids, about, sorry, about their mindset, their, their brain. Talking with them, understand, repeat them 10 times, 15 times. For me, I can repeat 100 times if, if I need to do, comparing to draw, to draw, you know, easy, you know, on whiteboard and say, he's going to ask me after a second, coach, but I'm not understanding. I'm going to tell him how you cannot understand. How you cannot understand. I understand, you, you cannot understand. But this is the problem. This is the problem. What I understand, players, a kid who got 10, 11, 12, he, don't, he cannot understand. He's not prepared to understand. I think that he must understand, but he's not reality. And please, from my point of view, stay a little bit, stop a little bit with my board. And I think it will be useful for everybody, for, for that coach also. Because, you know, uh, he will going to start to think another way, in another direction. You know, from my personal experience, I'm going to share my personal experience. And I spoke with Alex and I guess, I think three, three weeks ago, and suddenly it's happened. But when you're speaking about, about water polo and you, you don't have you know, something that is something important, but some things just come out. I, may, I think, no, I think, it's obvious that I made my, the biggest my progress in my career, you know, it suddenly happened when I uh, get out from Partizan 2009 and I just left with the national team for Serbia. Because before that, I did uh, uh, two jobs in the same time, leading the Partizan uh, Water Polo Club and the national team of Serbia. From 2006 to 2012. Before that, I was 2000. One until 2006, I was the junior coach of Serbia, and the same time coach of Partizan. But from 2009, after the World Championship in Rome, because before that I left Partizan, this is the first time that I had the time to analyze my work 10 years before. And this is the biggest impact of my career that I have the time to analyze what is good, what is bad, what is wrong, what I need to, to change, and what is. And I spent six, seven months, you know, to analyze what I did in the past. And I changed a lot of things. And this is something, another, you know, what I need to tell. Here, I understand a lot of coaches got the two jobs. That means they, they are teaching the women and they are teaching the boys. And I understand why. And I am not against it. But I am suggesting try to find some times, two or three months, meanwhile, I don't have to analyze your personal work. If you analyze honestly your personal work, you will, you will help yourself much as anyone can help you. And if you are looking from this side, from this perspective, from this direction, we are going to come return what I just started to talk. The players and the kids who have got 9, 10 years old, and I'm teaching me without the board, in the same time, I'm, I'm analyzing my work all the time, 24 hours. If I'm using a whiteboard in that ages, I just I think that I fix the problem, telling something, drawing something, and I go away. But it's not reality. And I'm making the problem for myself for no, for no reason. Okay? Shooters. I just spoke with someone, uh, someone 10 minutes ago, 15 minutes ago. This is the problem. In States, we don't have the shooters. Why? I think, maybe, Maybe not, because of first my comments, are we in water polo or are we in swim? Are we water polo coaches or are we swimming coaches? 
Are we our coaches with the board? Are we our coaches for the fundamental drills? If you, are want, if you want to uh, develop them for the fundamental drills, we don't need one board. We got, as the USA Water Federation, we got how many? 42,000 members. If we have so, at least 30% of that is under 12 years old. Maybe yes, maybe no. It's a huge number. We don't have to shoot it. I got a problem to select the players. In the team, if you are looking in the future, some opposite team against us can play easy zone against us because we cannot shoot. Why? The problem is, for my, basically, we, we are not starting. No, when we need to start, we are not teaching them as the water progress, we are not teaching them as the, to use horizontal practice, uh, for, sorry, vertical practice, more comparing also horizontal practice, and working hours, working hours, key element, working hours. We cannot do anything if we, they got twice practice per week. This is, you know, it's not enough. It's just not enough. Comparing, comparing the partisan. Eight, nine years old group. They got four practice per week. Four practice per week, two hours. One practice is two hours. That means eight hours per week. And one practice more with the stretching and conditioning and some starting position of the gym. With 10 and 11 years, they got five practice. 11 and 12, who is 11, they already got six practice per week. And this is huge. This is huge, working hours. This is huge. Because we got two practice per week, as what we're going home, what's going to happen if somebody will not come from one practice? Something happened. He got, you know, birthday party. He got <coughs> school. He, he got homework. He's going with the family on the holiday. And everything is normal. And I'm not against this. But what about this? Okay. Collaboration between coaches. For me, it's never going to work. It's never going to work. We will not succeed, not here. Water polo community in the world is very strange. <laughs> we are a small sport comparing basketball and everybody. And instead that we are working together, we are working against us, between each, between each other. And I do, I'm not an uh, optimist about this. It is going to change, not in states, not in the world. Maybe if we are going to lucky. We got lucky. But we will not spend the time about this, but I just mark this. If we cannot, if we, if we, we're going to be in position just to help each other, just a little, just a little, combine the practice, following what they are doing when they are in, in their, your club, what they are doing when they are in pipeline, pipeline, what they are doing while they are in college. If we go just start to collaborate a little bit more, that will be a huge impact. I don't have the, uh, maybe everybody knows, my practice, sorry, practice on national team is open. Everybody can come. But I'm not sure about the rest of the people. I know why. What is the secret? Honestly, I'm talking. What is the secret? Why we cannot watch your practice? What? Why? Can you? I am try, trying to compare us with the medicine, with the surgeries. Can you imagine the surgeries on the brain are not allowed new techniques for the world? You we got the, you know, uh, live streaming the surgery in Tokyo in the world worldwide. You know, and everybody can watch this. Why? I don't know why. I don't have the answer for all the questions, 
but this is the situation right now. And I'm trying with my approach to start to change this. Everybody is welcome to come to the national, the national team practice. There is no, you know, ban for this. Because I think I'm going to help you. You're going to help me maybe some, sometimes if you don't know this, with some silly question. And they're going to push me to think a little bit about some other things. And I will create something good in 10 years from the, uh, 10, 10 days from this. Maybe I will, maybe I will not, maybe I, I will do this. But I think there is no, this is not good. This is not good. We don't need to do this. I'm not talking about states, just to remind you. I'm talking about world. You know, in our clinics, worldwide, honestly, for my position, <coughs> is a fake. Nobody is telling anything. Nobody, no, nothing crucial, nothing important, you know. You cannot put, uh, play the video and say, look, this is good. Look, this is not good. Okay, I know this. But why? What is before this? What is after this? What is the... You understand me what I'm talking about? Okay. Vertical and horizontal position. What is this... What is about? What, what I mean about this? Water polo is playing with the legs. With the head, with the legs. Simple game with the head. Simple game with the, with the legs. Water pool is not playing with the hands. And this is the basic approach we need to change. 70%, 70% of the national, national practice is basically on the legs. 70%. We cannot change that immediately. But with your help from the beginning, from the early ages, if you're going to change this, to have 70 percent, I'm counting in 70 percent this in the swimming with the legs, double kicks, you know, movements, uh, drills, one on one, duels, everything is horizontal, uh, vertical. It cannot be just swimming. You can arrange your practice. You can choose whatever you want. But basically, 70 percent of national team is basically on the legs. And you, if you see different between Serbia right now and USA and when we want to be in the future, what is the difference? We are not in a position, we are not in a situation, you know, just the passing and the shooting. Where is the difference? The ball is coming. Our players are staying in the position, waiting for the ball. Then they receive the ball, then they are trying to do something. Serbian player, the ball left the, you know, the pass, passing, the, uh, the ball is coming, he's attacking the ball in highest position. Don't wait the ball to come, he's attacking the ball. He skipped the time attacking the ball, taking the control of the ball in the air, move forward, and he got advantage so clearly against me in the just because of this and we are taking this is not important this is huge important this is so different just because of this but we are not prepared we want to do this but we are not prepared we, our legs are not listening sometimes we are tired the drills you know we cannot do this but we we're going to change this there is no doubt that we're going to reach the goal what we want to do there is no doubt, but it will be good to start to beginning from the young categories to change this. Okay, change age group rules to promote skill development. You know, I was really surprised when I came here that still age group groups are how we got the age groups 20 or 25 years back in the Europe. This means 12 years, 14 years, 16 years, 18 years. 
My question was immediately, it was 18 years, 18 years in Europe, who got, who is, who got 16 or 17, and he's already marked mark as a talent. He's already next to the national team. He's already playing in the first league. He's already playing national league in his country. 18 years, for me, as a group, is just the numbers. And we don't have anything for this. Because, and I'm trying to change the, the group changes. To a little bit put, you know, the line down to be 11, 30, 15, 17. And through this, you know, change with the groups, try to connect the water for community inside. We must start earlier, we must select the earlier, we must teach the earlier, and following all the time. Okay. This is very interesting. About deliberate and focus in trainings. You know, I got coaches who teach me, you know, and you probably know he is one of the best coaches in the world, Nikola Stamenic, you know, and every time he was my first coach when I was 10 years old, 9 years old, you know. But every practice he finished, that he's so nervous, nervous, he's so sweat, he's, you know, wet from the water, from the wall, he lost so many energy. <clears throat> Each practice to teach us something, you know, and put all himself inside that we couldn't believe. And we are so grateful for him because he did this. And this is one of the approach which we need to change. When we got to practice, we got to practice. It's not just practice that we need to, you know, to mark that and inform some, you know, higher level that we just did, did the practice. And we got so many coaches, you know, who are really, you know, got good potential, good workers, commitment to the water polo, you know, and we just need to upgrade them and help them to bring them to the high level of the international water pool that we can use them in the future. There is no doubt. But the, you, you will, when you come to the deck, when you come to the pool, you will recognize very easily everything, what's going on. And we are trying at the same time in, in Europe to recruit the, as I, tell, as I told you before, in the same time we are teaching the players, but at the same time we recruit the, the, the coaches. And one of the key elements is the giving on the practice. I understand that you cannot be focused all three hours, but you can organize your practice with your assistant coaches to have the main impact when you want to have main impact on some part of the practice or part of what you want to do. You cannot be involved 100% all the time, but when you are involved, that was be full out, all out. Okay? I already speak about this, I don't need to speak about this, please change this. This is the focus about 10 years and uh, age groups, you know. I want to speak about this a little bit, you know, passing and receiving the ball. Basically, simple, simple drills, but it's not so simple. So complicated, so so different things, so different, you know, movements, and you must follow this. You know, it's not just give them pass, give them the ball, and you know, okay, ten minutes pass. No, it's not okay. You must follow. You must correct each body position, in balance, each fist, in everything, elbow, you must try, you, and you must be involved in it. Following the ball, as I already mentioned, <coughs> big difference with Serbia and right now, it's just a simple thing. Following the ball, 
and we must try to develop them in that age, and they got 10 years old. If they accept that in 10 years old, we are, we're going to be fine. We're going to be fine. No goggles, I said this. No goggles, I am suggesting. I cannot, you know, I'm just suggesting. You know, and uh, I think it's good. It's, I, I think it's useful. They hate me, I don't care. <laughs> but they will respect that after some some years when they go they, they feel that they got something for, from this because I forbid the gods because their approach their skills are going in another direction direction which we, which we can use for water for 12 years shooting techniques shooting techniques you know I got one book and there is, in that book from Serbia, I collect from my previous coaches, you got 170 drills, 170 drills about those young ages, you know. And we're going to try to, to put some drills in ODP from next year. We're going to shoot something that will be a new approach. We're going to try to help everybody, as I tell, as I talked before, we are not keep we will, we will not keep the knowledge what we know right now. We're gonna share this because I think if we wanna teach the young categories and the young boys in the in that age in the, this year that age, and when they come to pipeline, it will be also useful for us because we're gonna waste we will not waste the time to start then to you know, to build them, you know, and teach them what we need to teach. You know, and then we could do something more, some another level. And we're coming again. This is about co coaching, collaboration. Everything is, you know, it's, it's a big puzzle. It's a really big puzzle. But we are trying to follow this. Shooting technique, you can do everything what you want, but basically, basically, there is no good shooter. There is no good shooter in the world with body rotation. I'm following. I repeat. There is no good shooter in the world with body rotation. That means hips left, left hips, if you use right hand, left hips back, or left hands behind the back. He cannot shoot from that position. He can only shoot. He can shoot, but this is a big shoot. He can shoot only because he got strong body on his little bit strong. But this is not technique. The good shooters in the world, all around the world, technique. You know, this means he must use the all body extension, accumulate in higher level and get forward. True example, everybody is watching the volleyball, yes? And when somebody wants to have a smash, you know, this is basically this. But we need the left hand, because we are in water ball, we are water ball sport, we are in water. We need the left hand to support that body. You understand it? This is just start to beginning of big, you know. Okay, understanding the meaning of the game. This is now I'm returning on the whiteboard. You know? They must understand, you must we must teach them to understand the meaning of the game. How they can get advantage. Easy suggestion. Teach them every time. Hey guys. Hey boys, listen to me. You don't need to me help from, from outside to you know to do something what is natural. What is natural? Basically what is natural, where is the advantage in the water pro sport? Simple, six on five. Why six on five? Man up, six on five. Why six on five? Because one guy is in box and we got what we got? We got more space. Space. Teach the players to attack in every part of the world, of the scrimmage or the play, 
to attack the free space before his opponents. Following the ball, attack the free space, advantage to water. Without the ball, without ball, following the ball, attack the free space. You don't need, if I'm the, the boy, if I'm the player, I don't need my coach to give me permission to attack the free space. This is so natural. Following the ball, without the ball, attack the free space. Take the free space in front of you. Main approach. Tears are okay. Huh. <laughs> what? Uh, Okay, I'm coming from Serbia, it's a different culture. <laughs> but I know that here in the States it's a little bit different approach. And you cannot shout on the kids, you must be polite, you commit so many mistakes, you cannot repeat, okay, please, 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 you know, and you cannot do anything, you know, but we are sports and they must suffer. <laughs> they must suffer. And they will be thankful for you in the future. They must suffer. Sorry, but they must suffer. They must respect you as a coach, your spending time, your knowledge, what you want to share with you, with, with, him, with, him, with them, with him. But basically, they must suffer. They must, you must create the practice. Somehow, somehow, they must suffer. And they must recognize this. Okay? Because this is the line who are dividing the ordinary player, ordinary people, compared to champions, truly champions, truly succeed people in the world. There, I, I didn't. I didn't saw in my life, you know, I didn't find anyone, my friends, who is not in water you know, in engineering or economists, who didn't suffer until he succeeds or something. This is so natural. And I know I know how, but you know better than me, because you're in states more than I am, and you will fix that in your yeah, in your brain, you know, how you going to do this. And in the same time, respect already accepted the approach. You know? Okay. Fourteen. In the individual address. High level individual this. Of course, we're going to start with the individual deals. And when they got ages 10, 11, and 12. But, we do this in higher levels, 14. Then we are trying to give them a little bit more approach, with a little bit centers, with a little bit more things, with a little bit more changes, approach, change approach, individual approach to each of the, each of them to build them more. Basically, we are going to give them individual this 10, 11, 12 years old. But the 14 is major line. It's a line when we must spend more times to develop them, develop them more in that individual areas, specific things. This is so different, you know, this upgrading them on the basic areas is very important. It's very important. It's very important. Because this is 14, 15 years, this is, if they accept something in that, in that ages, we will be fine. Right? After that, they're going to build their body, they will be set, they're going to feel their body, they will, feel, they will have more confidence, more courage, they will have puberty and everything. But after that, there is no time. They, they will not accept this after this. Selection. Scorer, defender, or goalie. In that age, we must define finally to decide what they're going to be. 
shooter, defender, goalie. I didn't put attacker because I don't know what they mean attack. I didn't know until I came in states what is attacker. You know, I will tell you, for me it's better to use word defender. You know, attacker, I don't know what attacker means. I, I know, but attacker is not just attacker. No, uh, water polo is not, is, is not just a game which we're going to play just front court in front of one cage. Okay? 24 hour fitness. And we were thinking what we're going to put in this as the last one. But, you know, uh, again, sorry. I'm coming from Serbia, States. I'm trying to adjust my, my, myself as soon as possible. But uh, take, for example, concussions. I didn't hear that so many concussions got in the States here, comparing to Europe, because we are in Europe they're not treating concussions so often like we are treating concussions here. That means at the same time that the Europe kids you know, starting to go to gym much, much earlier, earlier than comparing here in the States. I don't think that it will be useful that they're going to lift the weights, but they must have the drills for the gym, for strength, condition, for, for that ages. There is no doubt that it will to help them, you know, you know, to be better in the pool. There is no doubt. And try to combine the practice and combine your programs that you can, in that age, put at least twice per week to get some conditional practice in the gym. But if you're not familiar with the lifting and weights, I'm okay with this. They can do without weights, but they can do, they need to do something to build their bodies. Okay? Uh, This is something which I just, we just uh, combine what I'm talking about, you know. Individual drills, station groups, working hours, whiteboard, is something what, if we gonna change a little bit their approach in these categories, we'll have more, you know, good, you know, water polo community in the, in the favor, uh, better player and better teams, okay. For me, it's, you know, just combine what we all, I already spoke about this. Okay? <coughs> this is very important, just to let you know, station groups, you know, this is very important, you know. And uh, I suggested to organize the practice few the station groups, you know, that in the previous, I, I, I spoke about goalies, shooters or defenders, you know, this is the same. I think that everybody who want to reach, who will gonna one day reach the national team, you know, they must be prepared for every position to play the team. Like, uh, you know, utilities. But not utilities on lower level, utilities on higher level. For, co for co of course, you're gonna have one basic position on one, sub position, one more position. But in a, what will be good for us that everybody have one of the station groups, they gonna, we're gonna teach them all the drills for different positions in the team, there will be no surprise in the future for us. Okay? Okay. Questions, thank you, everything. I didn't know that he's putting this picture. <laughs> okay, but Okay, basically this is this. Is there any question I'm here to to answer? You know, and I I think that we understand each other, that you understand what I'm talking about. I'm I'm making a, some mistakes in, the, in the pronounce some my ideas and my thoughts, but I think basically that we are fine to understand each other. Yes. Um, you were talking about having open practices. Yeah. Um, it would be possible to have some of the practices webcasted so that other parts of the country could see the practice. 
Yeah, why not? Why not? Why not? Also, can you publish when you are having practice on this area? Uh, I didn't think in the direction, but you know. Okay, what I'm thinking right now. We can organize the live stream or some practice and prepare just practice, you know, uh, that we can use as example for all the country, which is really good. But I don't think it's really interesting right now for for you guys here that we got problems that five players are going to be missing or four players are missing, and we must things uh, put for young players because they are in school and this is not what you want to see in live stream, you know. And because we got one goalie who is supporting us with the five-man defense, you know, this is not something you know. But <coughs> it's a good idea. I don't have the problem with this. But we must just need to have find find the time when we can combine. Uh, I think five days of practice, which is really useful. You know, and when we be together, when I go have all the team together on the high quality uh, practice, why not? There is no problem for me. I had another question about um, in in Serbia. How do you how do you approach athletes that want to do multiple sports? So like football or soccer, water polo. <laughs> you know, and not, not specifically swimming, but other sports. But you know, I was practicing the same by the same time uh, in handball in in Serbia and playing water polo and playing soccer, you know. And from sometimes, uh, you know, I don't have a problem with this, you know. But you know, you can you must give the the kids what they want to do. You must open them the you know their knowledge and their interest to do everything what they want. You cannot push them, but you can, if you want to keep them in the water pool, you can find a solution to put more interesting regarding water pool comparing any other sport. But uh, I think that we are enough fine with the numbers of the, of the players here in the States, you know? And basically at the end, you know, we are not in the in the position to to force someone to you know to play to play water for instead of football or instead of basketball. This is more about uh, the group who is inside, about more about coaches, more about environment, you know, and uh, much easier in Europe comparing the states. I must tell you, you know, because here in the states there is so many opportunities. It's, it's not easy to keep them in track just for water polo because, you know, in the Europe, you don't have so many options. Really. You don't have, I don't know, it's a bad or good thing, but you don't have so many options. Especially here, here the kids in California, they got so many options. They got really so many options. You know, and, you know, but I think that here, we as a country, we can easily feel, you know, the national team for the Olympic Games with this number that we got right now. And, you know, uh, when I was coach of young categories in Partizan, when the parents come to me and said, okay, I don't think what's, you know, what is good for my kid, should he stay or should he go another sport, and I said, okay, if you want to go, please go immediately. If you want to stay, please don't come me, come to me second time to to, t to tell me what I should do. The parents must also have the, uh, the, uh, to take the decision. No, but they know better situation in their home, in their family, than we know because we are less time with them on the deck of the practice comparing the family, and family can help us giving us information about their kids, you know. I didn't give you a right answer. I don't know the right answer right now. Generally, I don't know the right answer.
I cannot compare right now in Europe and the United States about this because you can you can just you can cannot compare right now about this how to you know put sorry how to you know organize the the life and everything to keep the the kid in the water pool comparing lacrosse, or basketball, or swimming, or surfing. You know. When I came here, I got two injured players from the national team who got surfing. You know, and I said, you know, what you, I don't know, you're practicing or what? No, I was surfing. You know, <laughs> you know. okay. I, I start to, to learn skiing when I finish my uh, water pool career. Here in States, you cannot do this. Because family will come first. So, you know, why you forbid my kids to go to skiing? Or, uh, we must change a little bit from time to time, try to change a little bit of mind. You know. you know, but we cannot change the mindset of the family and the culture. It's a waste of time. Sorry. When you teach uh, young kids, Shoot. Uh, what kind of shooting drills do, do? do they do? Do they always have to shoot against the goalie in the goal, or you, you have to shoot against the wall? Or, uh, you encourage shooting high corners right away. Or how do you develop uh, that skill? You know, you know, you can give them so different drills, but I, I'm not uh, someone who is uh, more familiar to shooting without bullets. Hungarians in the drills are shooting without boys, you know, and they got good shooters. But I'm not more familiar with the shooting on the boys or the cage with the boys. You got so many different drills. You can give them everything, you know, and uh, you can change after every five, seven minutes your drills. Depends how many times you get, you know, giving them especially. Uh, task what they need to do to shoot low pass, to shoot hazy, to shoot skip, legs in front, legs inside, legs behind, you know, without hand, without left hand, you shoot without the left hand, it's very useful. You can shoot here, you can put hands here, you can put hands here, you can stay like this, you can shoot as a practice. There is, no, there is so many, you know, that you can use, but, you know, you cannot shoot if you are not build the legs. First, you must build the legs, you may build the balance with the legs. This is maybe, I forget to tell you, to tell everyone. In the swimming, kick, back for kick, it's like this. Okay? like this all until the end in water polo this movement this is not exist this is not exist in water in water polo it's maximum like this because if you're going to work like this and there's something going to change in the in the in the in the, in the sorry in the play while you're playing. You need more time to recover yourself and put your position to attack and change the direction after, again. And until, while you're doing this and recovering, again, to put your position to move again, everything is changed. And this is the same with the shooting. There is no shooting with the legs all down, Make the kicks all down to, f to feel the circle. You know? Because if you want to do this, that will be like jump shot in basketball. But we are not in basketball. You know? This does not exist in water. This is swimming comparing water. This does not exist. You can give them as like, an exercise just for relaxing sometimes. But they. This is not existing. It's like this, 
double kick or from or from uh, egg beater. He, when he's doing egg beater, kick. This is not kick. See? Okay, sorry. You said when you were talking about shooting about the whiteboard and the swimming and eliminating that stuff early on, do you feel like that is um, that one of our biggest disadvantages is that we're just not shooting enough and it's really the volume of shots that kids are taking yes. uh, at an early age or do we actually need to develop some skills that we are currently not developing or both? Yes, both. both. First, we must develop legs, positional legs. Hips, hands, you know, chin. Chin is very important for the shooter. Chin is very important. You know, when we develop this, then it's out of the shooter. Then, when you uh, succeed, you have some out of the shooting, then you're going to follow the wrist and the fingers. How are we going to, how are we going to, uh, hold the ball. We can hold the ball with the two fingers. But basically we are following the we are holding the ball with three or four fingers. We cannot we are not following the ball with five holding the ball with five fingers. You know? And when we are shooting, when we are shooting, we cannot shoot like this. And our finish without shooting is not shooting like this. We are shooting going down, but the hand and the wrist is coming, if we are looking at our body movement, is coming as the last one, it's not coming as the first one or in the middle one. For the good shooter, if I am going like this, the shooting is starting from the, from the bottom of my body, from the legs down. Transition, I am in this position. And going from this, going from put all energy inside, put down, car position, get chin a little bit down, that the eye gonna come with it, and then it's shoot. Okay? We can talk about this, you know, it's different. You can shoot from this position. This, but this is the same. You can shoot from this position, but this is the same. The finish is the same. Low pass. Low pass is not this. Low pass is the same. You must follow the low pass. Okay. How Sorry. many hours do you like? Are, are they shooting in the young ages uh, in practice? Like of your practice, how much of the time uh, is, is shooting? I'm gonna tell you right now. Uh, for those kids who got four practice, uh, four uh, practice in a week, it means eight hours. 45 minutes each practice. It's been 40 minutes, 45 minutes they are shooting. It's been, they got two hours practice per day. From that practice, they are shooting 45 minutes at least. That's mean you can organize the practice in shooting with six or five, five men. It's also the shooting. Because you can give it to them the reels. Okay, guys, now free, maximum free passes. Maximum free pass say I want to shoot. And you say at the same time you you're you're doing five men blocking and you're doing the, the shooting. You can combine everything what you want. But this is if you want to be we return back. Analyze my practice. Analyze analyzing my work. All the time. Because I mentioned already Stamets, probably everybody knows this. And he gives so many interviews in newspaper and he start, he's repeating all the time. Everything what I learned, I learned from the players. Players teach me almost everything. You know. And when I start to be the coach, he helped me a lot with just one sentence. He called me, this is my last uh, uh, playing uh, year uh, 1996, and he came to me, came to me and said, "Look, Dan, I think that you, you, will, you, will, you can be a good coach, and I think that you, will, you need to start to be, you know, to play, 
wear yourself to be the coach. And for that time, it will be something new for me. Okay, I, I was thinking something about this, but I'm not really involved in this idea, you know. And, uh, and he said to me, okay, think about this, you know, we can speak about this one month after, you know, two weeks after, you know, and he approached me after three weeks, one month, and you know, I said, what, do you, what is your decision? I said to him, okay, let's try. And he said to me, okay, come in three days, you know, and we can talk a, bit, a little bit about this. And in that time, I was playing all, already uh, 13 years National League in, in Serbia, in Europe and everything. And uh, and we sit in or around one table and say, okay, we're gonna start a little bit talk about this. And I said, okay, Nikola, but you know, I know this, I know this, I, I I'm not sure about this. You know, I say, he said, I mean, stop, 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 stop. What are you talking about? No, no, no. I think that I know this. I think uh, you do you teach me this? You know, teach, I know this. And she said, hey, listen, you don't know anything. <laughs> you don't know, and he repeat me three times this. You don't know, and I was so ashamed, you know, about this. And I, we, we spoke a little bit, 10, 15 minutes after this, but he recognized that I was not so, you know, satisfied with his answer, you know. And I was so, you know, you know shamed, and uh, I, I didn't expect to hear something from him, you know, and. But after two, three weeks, I start to, you know, all my papers, which I trying to, as everyone try to, after the practice to, to write something, what is important, what different coaches, I put everything in trash and started from zero. And that sentence and his approach is the main approach and change everything. Just from this sentence. He said to me, you don't know anything. And I started from the beginning, that I don't know anything. And I started to run. And he helped me a lot, you know, in my career and everything. But, you know, just one uh, personal, you know, experience. Any question? Okay, I'm talking too much.